backstage with Mothership on Solid Rock Radio begins now. Hear the best in new music, artist interviews, stories from the road, and more. You are now backstage, and here's your host, Mothership. Hey, everybody. My guest today is gospel hip-hop artist Big Rev, who reaches out to his audience with uplifting and inspiring songs to spread the gospel in his own unique way. We had a little talk about that. How long have you been in ministry? Oh, I have been in ministry for 23 years. I uh, started this back when I was 17, 18, somewhere like that. And um, I started on a karaoke machine with a cassette tape. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was pretty rough back then, but (laughs) you got to start somewhere, right? Uh, So I would just record um, different lyrics. I'd write things and just record on a karaoke machine. And then one thing led to another. And I met a buddy of mine. I went to high school with, he actually came over one day and knocked on my door and said, Hey, I'm passing out these mixtapes. I'm doing music. And I'm like, Hey, I'm in there trying to do music. And, uh, we formed a group back then called new world Christians. NWC is what we were called. So we were together for about three or four years. And then we kind of split, went our own way. And I stepped out of music for a little while and married my wife, Sarah, and we have five beautiful boys. And then God kept pulling at me to start ministry again. So I stepped back in and uh, God blessed me with an opportunity, a local record label here in Fort Smith called Fellowship Music. Mm -hmm. And um, I was there for two years and uh, did two albums underneath them. And then uh, God blessed me with an opportunity to be with Resurrection Records with Aaron. And uh, I guess the rest is uh, history. Yeah. How did you choose Big Rev? Was that a nickname? Well, when I was younger... I had an infatuation with the book of Revelation, and I know that's a deep book to jump into, And but I was so infatuated with like the end times. You know, I grew up in an old school Pentecostal church back when I was a kid. They always preached about, you know, the Lord's coming, this is going to happen, the Antichrist, the Four Horsemen. Well, when I was a kid, that was like comic books sounding to me. So I started digging deep into Revelation, and then when I started in the music, I was like, Revelation. I like that revelation. So I went with revelation for a little while and then I'm a big dude. So I was like, well, I don't want to say revelation all the time. So I'm going to short it to big rev because I have big love for Jesus. And then of course, revelation. So I was like, okay, big rev. So I put those two together. What genre would you say that your music falls under? I I was kind of surprised. It wasn't what I had expected. Go ahead. (laughs) I, um, you know, I grew up, I'll start from, if it's okay, I'll start from my beginnings to where it'll lead it. up. Go for it. Well, you know, I was born in 82, um, but back in the late 80s, early 90s, my dad was traveling with Doug Stone and John Anderson back in the late 80s and early 90s. He was open. He was their opening act back mm-hmm. then. And he, his name was Johnny, and he would open them up, open up for them. So I would, that was my first taste of music was country. But for some reason, I could never grasp the hold of country. I just I had I shot away from that. Uh, but that's what my dad did for so many years. And then I got into sounds of classic rock was my first love. The Eagles, Queen, um, mm-hmm. Sticks, Foreigner, list goes on and on. That was my first love of music was classic rock. Well, then I got to the sounds of hip hop and I liked a lot of hip hop, mm-hmm. but I also liked classic rock as well but i didn't have the the funds at the time or because it was just me and my brother and my mom to play classic rock you know instruments so getting a karaoke machine was a lot easier for me back then you know okay i'm gonna start rapping well i realized that i started rapping and i was like wait a minute this is actually pretty decent it's not that bad you know of course back then you know being white and being in a rap because that's back when it first started you know so i started rapping and then I just stuck with it. And then that's all I did for a while, but I did lead praise and worship at my church. So I was doing like different kinds of genres of music. Like I would have a show the, the day before, and then I'd go to church and do praise and worship. So I had to go from Big Rev to just John, praise and worship leader the next day. Well, then I signed with the record label and I decided, hey guys, I want to do something different. I want to do some rap rock. And... We got live instruments, and we recorded my single that's out now called Make a Stand. And um, the rock rap really stuck with me. So I guess you could say I call myself an alternative Christian artist because I do rock. 
I do rap, I do I sing, I do praise and worship. So I kind of do everything. But primarily, most of my songs are hip hop. But I try to have every genre for every type of crowd. Yeah. Okay. Your lyrics are very intentional. There's a message. I'm the kind of writer that, of course, I pray before I write every single time because that's my connection to God, of course. And I ask him to give me the things to write because I don't want to write anything that's meaningless. I want to make sure whatever I write and I record, it is going to help somebody through a struggle, through an addiction, through anything that they're facing or or just give them hope. Um, because that is our job. Our job is to minister the gospel and, and to help people. And yeah, I have a couple songs that are fun and you dance to and everything, but at the same time, I want to make sure that I'm recording and I'm writing words that mean something. I mean, anybody can get in there and just spit a bunch of gibberish, but I want to make sure what I write is glorifying the kingdom of heaven and it's glorifying the, the king of kings. So when I, like I said, make a stand is talking about making a stand in your walk in faith in this world that is going insane. That's going to keep going insane until the Lord comes back. Um, so as a Christian, we want to stand firm on our belief in what we believe in and fight for Jesus and stand for his word. And no matter what comes our way, no matter how crazy the world gets, our message is, is Jesus regardless. And it goes with the, the scripture in the Bible, you know, I stand. When you don't know what to do, stand firm. So, yeah. Does anyone else work with you with your music? You do everything solo? Well, for years, of course, I was with New World Christians. Um, back in 2017 is when I really started going by myself, is when I, when I signed to the record label back in 2017, and I recorded the two EPs. Those were the first two albums I technically did by myself. So, um, and then now I have my 15 year old son, which he's getting ready to be 16. His name's Kobe J and he actually performs with me now. Okay. So he travels with me and he's in the ministry as well. And I'm so proud of him as his dad because he is choosing to do this ministry instead of doing normal teenager stuff. <laughs> so yeah, he actually recorded his first song a couple of days ago. As far as like, recording with me he just started doing that but he's technically like a hype man on stage for me but he does travel with me um and he's a blessing because the older i get some of the songs are tougher to do by myself <laughs> not as easy as they used to be and he usually picks up the slack and, and helps me out with it so but yeah and my wife she also travels with me everywhere we go mm -hmm. uh, she runs my merch table for me and she is just there and it helps me out a lot I can't be one of those artists that travel by myself. Yeah. I just couldn't do it. I can't, I, you know, there's a lot and hats off to the ones that do, but I just can't travel that far without my, my best friend with me. And, mm -hmm. and then of course my son, Kobe. Do you have a touring band? No, ma'am. I just work off tracks. So who records the music for you? Um, I have a buddy named Brad Smith and he has been a blessing. He lives in a little town, probably about 30, 45 minutes away from here called Boonville, Arkansas. And he is recording me absolutely for free. How nice. Because he is really invested in my ministry and he wants to help out any way he can. And um, he has just been a blessing. Just been a blessing. Now, um, I just recorded a, a single. I haven't released it yet. But Rob from uh, Tricord, he's with Crimson Overtone. He's actually going to probably end up being my mixer and master guy. Yeah, so he did a really good job on the next single that I have coming out later. I don't know when, but he uh, sent me the final product, and it sounded good. What were some of your musical influences in the maybe the Christian music realm? Oh, man. My first Christian influence had to have been probably um, uh, Lindell Cooley. I don't know. He was an old-school praise and worship singer back in the day. Okay. Um, of course, and then I got introduced into, like, a lot of local Southern gospel groups around here. Um, but honestly, Disciple was one of the biggest rock influences, a Christian rock influences that I started really listening to. Yeah. And, then, uh, and then, of course, here come Mercy Me, Casting Crowns, The Newsboys. I have a lot of influences um, throughout the years um, and Seventh Day Slumber, of course, um, and the Christian rock genre. But Christian rap, I don't really, I know this sounds crazy, but I don't listen to a whole lot of Christian rap and rap in general. I know it's weird. 
a lot of people go, how can you do rap and you don't even listen to it? I only listen to probably maybe two or three rap artists. That's uh, KB, uh, this guy named uh, D1, which mm-hmm. he's just now coming out, coming up. D1 and um, uh, the guy named Bizzle. Ooh. Yeah. So those are the only three that I really listen to um, Christian rap wise. But yeah, pretty much that's it. Well, there are a lot of uh, Christian artists that have the element of rap. I mean, like I'm thinking TFK and like DC Talk, Toby Mac, especially the oh, early yeah. Toby Mac stuff where it was uh, incorporated in with the rock and, and stuff. So I was wondering if those were influences of yours DC as well. Talk. I, I forgot. Yeah, DC Talk was a big influence, too. What was the first song that you wrote? The very first song I wrote? That's a good question. Honestly, I've not had that question asked to me before. That's crazy. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, man. Let me think. Um, I think it was called I'm a Christian, and I wrote it back in 2001, right after high school. Um, and I, I'm a Christian ready for the spiritual battle. I mean, it was, oh man, but it was, <laughs> <laughs> but that was the very first, uh, Christian rap song I ever wrote. And like I said, it was over a karaoke machine. Um, and then I ended up transitioning it into our little studio we had at my buddy's house, our little small little microphone with a rubber band wrapped around it. It was ridiculous, but it worked. <laughs> nice. So, Yeah. What makes you like a song? Is it like the melody, the lyrics, uh, the theme? What, what is it? It, it? it really, the lyrics. And I say that because, like I said, I'm a writer that when I write, I have to write about something that's going to help somebody. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's got to be the lyrics that catch me. And that's one thing about Brandon Lake that I really love is that his lyrics and his songs catch me so quick. And uh, and we actually sing how some of his songs in our church now. Um, but, yeah, lyrics is what grabs me. And then second, of course, is the beat. You know, mm-hmm. you got to have a good beat to yeah. go with the good lyrics. There you go. Well, what does an average day look like for you? Uh, what do you do in your IRL, as they say, your real life? My real life is pretty interesting. Um, I have a I have like I said, I've got five teenage boys. Um, when me and my wife got married, she had two and I had three. So it's kind of the Brady Bunch, but just all boys. Neat. Um, they are 19, 18, 17 and two 15 year olds. Kobe's the one that performs with me. He's getting ready to be 16 this month. So, yeah, it's a pretty eventful. Uh, and my 17 year old is autistic. His name's Tristan and he's more on the MR, the severe side of things. But he's a blessing and I wouldn't have him any other way. He keeps us pretty much entertained. <laughs> he's a joy. The older he's getting, the better he's getting. Um, but then, you know, I have my family and my wife, Sarah. She bakes. Um, she runs her own little sweet shop on Facebook called Sarah's Sweet Shop, and she's always baking all kinds of stuff. Um, I remember Patrick and Three Days uh, Under come down, and we did a show together, and she made Patrick a, um, a dump cake. Oh, man, and he loved it. So when we did another show together in Ohio. And she made him another one. So <laughs> she um, she does that. And then, of course, I, I work part time still. I'm still part time at a, a little store called Michael's Crafts. OK. Yeah, we have Michael's here. Yeah. It's here a chain, now. right? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I've been there 10 years and uh, I, I stay there also because they're so uh, they work with me and my schedule. That's nice. And my, and my ministry. And um it's just somewhere that I'm comfortable and, and, you know, it's a guaranteed check. I mean, there could be weeks and months I don't get a, a show, you know what I mean? Right. Or a ministry opportunity. So I always have that income, but God is, God is blessing me opening so, so many doors to where I'm to the point where I'm like, whoo, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but pretty much an everyday normal life is just living life with teenage boys and just trying to keep up with life. But number one, you know, church and prayer and, we go to prayer every morning at 6 a.m. at my church. We, and that's how we like to start our day. And then, of course, sometimes we come home and go to bed after the, after that. But, yeah. <laughs> but then we're always at church. We go to Joy Life Kingdom Center. It's in a little town called Moffitt, Oklahoma. But, yeah, pretty much a normal life, really. I mean, other than yeah. five teenage boys. And, oh, yeah, I could tell all kinds of stories, but we wouldn't have enough time. <laughs> okay. Why did you choose Michael's? Are you an artistic person? Do you do art? Uh, no, my best friend, Daniel, he, he does all my artwork for me that you see on Facebook, all the cartoon stuff. 
he okay. uh, he he was actually working there as a manager, um, and I just wanted to do something different. I was youth pastoring for years at a at a church in Van Buren, and the pastor left there, so I stepped down, and I was needing a job, so I just he helped me get on there, <laughs> and then um, I, I started working there, and then that's when the doors started opening for ministry. And at first I was like, do I got to leave here? And they were like, no, no, we don't want you to leave. We'll just work with you. And I've been there 10 years and I don't know when I'm going to leave. It just depends on what God has in store for me. So, yeah. well, it sounds like a great setup for you. Yes, ma'am. It is. It really is. You know, it's unusual to have a job that's that accommodating. Yes. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. It, it really is. It's been a blessing. I want to talk about how you got on this new label with Aaron Michaels. How did you guys meet? Well, it's it's really God. Honestly, I, I know it, it really is because I met uh, Patrick Rivers from Three Days Under on a podcast, Rock Salt Experience is what, is what we did. And he was on there and he was talking to me about a show and he invited me to it uh, to perform. And we did a show together with Aaron Michaels. And that was the first time that I got to meet Aaron. And uh, we just kept in contact and we come around. We did another show together. And then Aaron just contacted me out of the blue and was like, hey, brother, I've got this label I'm starting up. And we would really, really love to have you um, pray about it and get back with me. And I prayed on it for a couple of days and uh, I, I got the green light and I was like, OK, let's do it. I mean, it was pretty much that simple. Um, he really, he liked the message, the ministry and everything. And we just gelled and we're yeah. just like a big family now. And then of course he started adding tricord and crimson overtone and reborn and, and all the other guys, mm -hmm. Trey Tate. I mean, I can go on and on and, and we're just like a big old family. And, um, it is really, truly a blessing. And Aaron has done so much for the ministry that in, in these past couple months, then, then. I had in my entire life. I mean, it's just really, really awesome. How have things changed for you since that happened? Things kind of escalated or uh, speeded up? Oh, uh, they've both <laughs> <laughs> escalated and speeded up to the point where I'm like, God, are we going to slow down? But God says, go, I got to go. So he, God he, says, this is what you've been praying for every morning exactly. at 6 o'clock. I was like, why couldn't it happen when I was 18? I'm 42, you know, but hey, it's all, it's a blessing. And yeah, doors have, have been swinging wide open and uh, when he says go I go so it's just a really it's just a blessing it really is I'm thinking about a few Bible people that uh, got started late in life they probably thought the same thing I'm 80 years well, old now yeah like Abraham uh, yeah. And his, you know Sarah having the baby and everything <laughs> why couldn't I have this baby when I was 18 yeah <laughs> That's crazy. So tell me what is in the works for you right now. You're working on just new songs. Are you working on an EP or an album? What do you got going on? Well, right now uh, we released Fruits of the Flesh, um, Three Days Under, featuring myself. Um, the video just was released. It's on YouTube. It's up everywhere. So that's our single that's out now. Um, and then I, I released a single called Don't Stop With It last month or the month before. And then a couple months before that was Make a Stand. So, okay. but I do got probably five or six songs recorded right now. Um, I'm in the process of recording right now. And what I do is I record a bunch of songs and then I pick through which ones I want to put together and, and build around that, and make an album up. So that's what I'm doing right now. So, okay. yeah. Are there any of those songs that would you'd like to uh, tell people what they're about? Got a particular one in mind? Okay, um, Don't Stop With It is the dance song, but that stems from the story of David when the spirit hit him and he just started dancing and ripping his clothes off and just got so excited that that radical praise. And I was sitting there thinking, you know what, I want to have a good time with this song and I want to dance, but of course, you know, glorify the Lord at the same time. So I'm thinking, don't stop with it. You know, don't stop with it. Don't stop praising God. Don't stop glorifying the Lord no matter what you go through. Don't stop. Keep going dance get your praise on um and that's pretty much what that song's about it's just a really cool dance praise song is what i call it yeah. and then of course make a stand which i kind of said earlier about standing firm in your faith and and never wavering in tough moments and when you're facing this crazy world 
stand faith in Jesus, stand on his word and um, believe in his word. And uh, he will work through your life if you stand and believe and have that faith. You got to have faith. That's the that's mm-hmm. the key. So now I'm guessing you pretty much grew up in church from what we've already talked about. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was one of them kids that were was yeah pretty much raised in church my entire life. Um, of course, I you know once I got older and then hit the teenage years, I was kind of in and out. And but I always came back and I always made sure that I was in the house of the Lord. Even when I was living the life I shouldn't have been living, I was kind of lukewarm, but I was still in the house of the Lord. I still felt like, dude, I can't miss church regardless if I'm staying up all night partying. I still got to be at church the next morning. I have to, number one, because Lord, and then number two, my grandma, because if I wouldn't show up, she would come looking for me. But, But I always had that in my heart that I have to be at church. I have to be in the kingdom, I have to be, you know, and when I say partying and out, you know, backsliding and all that, I don't mean like getting out in super duper sin. I mean, just, you know, what you do, what you face when you get to be 18, 19, you know, 20 years old or, you know, stuff like that. You have temptations. And then I started Christian music and that's when all the temptations started throwing at me, you know, because I started so early. And then I seen the life that my dad lived. I mean, he lived a fast life. He, we lost him two years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, but he had a, a big impact on my life, but I seen what he went through, and I was like, you know what? I want to do music, but I don't want to do it that way. You know what I mean? So, uh, but yeah, I, I just always had to, every everything that would happen in my life, it always come back to church. It was kind of like the story of the prodigal son, you know? So... <laughs> dad his dad let him leave for a while and then he realized man i shouldn't have done that but what's so awesome about god is that he opened his arms and welcomed me back no matter what i've done in my life so yeah to sum it up i've been in church my whole life <laughs> do you have a particular passion project or what is your passion my passion is my ministry and and in trying to top my last single <laughs> just i'm trying to like make things better as I go and not just music wise, just as, as for the kingdom. Like I, I, that, I guess you could say that's my passion to make sure whatever I'm doing is to glorify the Lord even better Mm -hmm. the next time. You know what I'm saying? So pretty much that's my passion. This ministry is, is other than part-time at Michael's and my family, this is my ministry. This is what I live. This is my passion. Um, honestly, um, I did have a passion before was was to be a professional wrestler. Um, oh yeah. Yes, I had I had um, the money saved up. I was getting ready to go to a power plant back in the WCW days in Georgia, up there in Georgia. Yeah. And um, I had the money saved up, and I was trained. I was in shape, and my mom bought me this cutlass, this '89 cutlass. I decided to go see a girl, and I wasn't supposed to go. And on my way back, I totaled it. Oh, no. So guess what I had to do? I had to pay my mom money, the money back because it was the right thing to do. Yeah. And I just never saved it up to go back. But God works in mysterious ways. And if I would have done that, I would have never got to see the things that I've seen now and be able to do what I do now. You know, yeah. so that was pretty much my passion before. Music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how life unfolds. What's been your favorite experience in music ministry so far? Number one is to see each souls saved. And <laughs> it just gets me so excited that, you know, that's the whole purpose of doing what we're doing is to see souls saved and, and lives forever changed is the reason we do this. And and it's it's awesome that I have the opportunity to share my message and a song can touch someone's heart and they can be drastically changed. That right there is worth the traveling. That is worth, you know, all the hardship, the blood, sweat, and tears just to see someone come to the come to the Lord. That is what's that that's what makes it worth it. And that's one of my favorite, favorite highlights of, of any any show we go to is seeing people changed. Amen. Where do you see Big Rev in five years? Oh, man, hopefully retired, happy and watching my son and producing my son and and managing my son and having him continue the ministry is what my plans are. But 
every time I say that, God says, nope, we're not done yet. We're going to keep going. So okay. that's what I want, but I don't know what God's going to want. <laughs> it's true. You can't plan these things. They just happen. Yes, ma'am. What would be the lowest point in your life? Oh, man. You know, I have been blessed. I was never addicted to drugs. I never had issues with, you know, anything like that. Um, but I would have to say one of the lowest times of my life was when I lost my dad two years ago. That really shook my faith. And not that I doubted God, I, I, you know, not that I back like, I, oh, I'm not going to church. Blah, blah, blah. I just it really shook my faith because he was a fighter and he would write notes because he, he passed away of lung cancer and. Uh -oh. He would write letters and say, I'm going to beat this. God is going to heal me. God is going to save me from this. I'm going to beat this like I beat everything else in life. And he just didn't. And I found those notes after he passed away in his Bible. When I started reading those, it really like, I know we don't, we're not supposed to question God, but I was asking him, Lord, why didn't you help him? Why didn't you save him? And it really shook. And I got depressed. I stayed in my room for days. My wife Thank God for my wife and my kids, because if it wasn't for them, I don't know what would have happened. You know, mm -hmm. they they really kept me up. And then also my music, I would get sidetracked and start writing. And it, that's what got me out of the depression was writing. And I would just write and write and write. And and I just continued to pray. And then one day I just sit here and I'm going, why should I sit here and cry and be depressed when my dad is in heaven, walking the streets of gold, sitting with Jesus, having the best time of his life, I'm down here crying. I feel selfish. I shouldn't feel this way. I, I should feel happy for my dad. And ever since then, ever since I thought about that, I have my good days and I have my bad days where I miss him. But at the same time, I'm like, he's up there where I'm still trying to get to. <laughs> so I've got to think positive like that, you know, like. He won his race. I'm not going to sit here and, and cry in my pity and be selfish about me and my feelings when he's up there walking on the streets of gold and being happy. And, uh, and one day I will be able to see him again. But honestly, that was probably one of the lowest times of my life is when I lost my dad. Yeah, we miss him. We sure do. You feel like the grief process has made you stronger? Yes, ma'am. I sure have. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And my desire to get to heaven, my desire to see other people get to heaven, my desire to pour the ministry into my boys so mm -hmm. they can 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 see their papa again and, and just, you know, because they were really close to him, too. And honestly, pouring my ministry into my kids, it really it's got a lot better. It's got a lot stronger, my passion mm -hmm. for it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've noticed that when you lose people, you become a lot more sensitive to other people and you are a lot more compassionate than you were yes, before. Yes, that is totally true. We've had a lot of tragedy and, and loss in our family, but I tell you what, I have the most compassion for people that I've ever had. And I try to tell people I love them. I take pictures. Oh, I hug them. Exact way. Yep. I freak people out because I'm like, Hey, I, you know, Hey, love you, brother. Love you, sister. You know? And they're just like, you don't know me. Well, you know, <laughs> That's how we're supposed yeah. to be, you know. And every time somebody walks out the door, you don't know if that's the last time. Exactly. That is so true. That is so true. <laughs> yeah. It changes you, for sure. I appreciate you sharing that. Where can people find your music? It's kind of weird. I'm sold out of my two EPs. I've got physical copies of my Greatest Hits album, but then I have a brand new album that's only streaming. <laughs> so I haven't got physical copies of the v the Victory and Prayer album yet. You can find... Victory in Prayer, um, The Greatest Hits album, and all my singles on YouTube, a uh, Amazon, Apple Music, Spotify, um, everywhere. You can find them all everywhere. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Well, that would be great. Can I leave you with one thing? It's basically kind of a motto that I like to use and say. Um, it says, remember your voice tunes the life of the lifeless people when you're doing ministry, and Jesus needs to be your vocal point. Nice. That's a good way to end it. Yeah. You know, remember your voice tunes the life of the lifeless. I just really, I love that. <laughs> Was there anything else I missed? They can find all my 
concert dates on Spotify, everything online. You know how it is nowadays. So. I know it. Yep. Yeah. That's the way you do it. Well, it's nice to meet you, Big Rev. Nice to meet you, too. Hopefully we'll have more meetings together. God bless you. God bless you, too. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for more great music. And check out my blog page on the Solid Rock Radio website for my guests' social media links. If you've missed any of my past interviews, you can find them uploaded to podcast.solidrockradio.org. Have a wonderful week, and let's be kind to one another.